foot of worship. We have a few announcements for you, so listen up. King of all the universe, we love you. Today is the last day to give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering and to some boys and girls here. Just thank you for those who have supported here. Are you ready for a totally unique VBS adventure? You've never seen anything like this. Welcome to a place where kids will build, explore, and discover that they were made by the ultimate creator, God. This is Maker Fun Factory. Kids are so creative. This VBS shows kids what a unique and wonderful creation they are. Everything's so hands-on, even the decorations. We got to make the snacks and even invent our own games. That was so much fun. This totally helps kids discover that they were intentionally created, that God has a really big plan for their life. I like seeing the kids that were inventors. It's great to see kids' imaginations running wild. I've never been to anything like this before. It's amazing to think of the changes it's going to have on kids as they go back to their daily lives. They'll live differently, knowing that God created them and has a purpose for their life. I can't wait to come back again. At 4.30 p.m., there's going to be a VBS meeting if anyone would like to help in the fellowship mall. May 4th is a special day, and no, I'm not talking about Star Wars Day. It's the National Day of Prayer, and we are also having a Young Heart Watching here at the church. Whether you come eat here at the church or at the courthouse, it's up to you. Come enjoy some good food, uplifting message, and prayer. Each of these starts at 12 o'clock noon. May the 4th be with you. This will be the last time we announce Dr. John Che's view of a call service because it's happening next week. We will have Sunday school at 9.30 and a joint service at 10.30, which Dr. Che will lead and direct. There will be a vote at the end of the service to hire Dr. Che as a traditional worship leader. Please contact the church if you have any questions about this process. Um, also on the 7th, the Children's Ministry is having their final fundraiser, another Pancake Supper. Mm. You come support these little ones and give them a helping hand so they can get to camp and learn about Jesus. Mother's Day is on Sunday, May 14th, and if you have a child two years or younger who would like to dedicate them to the Lord, please call the church up and let's start that up real quick and easy. Mm -hmm. And you can have it in either service, but we need to know ahead of time, so give us a call. I like that. That's everything you need to know for this week. Until next time! <laughs> We had a fun time uh, making that video for youth-led worship. Thank you guys for allowing us to come and lead worship this morning. Why don't you go ahead and stand and greet one another. Shout out your name from the rooftops I 
He is yours this morning. Go ahead and have a seat if you would. So our pastor Steve is not here this morning, as you can tell. Um, we've taken over the place. And so uh, I didn't have the volume correct on this, the announcement video, so if you didn't hear any of that, uh, make sure you look at your bulletin and look in there. I believe I missed the men's breakfast for Saturday, um, so make sure and come to that if you're, if you're a man, if you're a guy, if you're a boy. Yeah, no ladies. And so it's going to be a great time. Uh, welcome. Welcome to worship. Uh, one thing I did forget in the last service was if you are a guest this morning, there's a little card you can fill out in the bulletin. And if you want to take it to the Welcome Center in the back uh, after church, uh, we will give you a, a special gift for being here and worshiping with us this morning. But we do like to start off each uh, Sunday in prayer. Uh, and we just ask that you would just prepare your hearts and get, uh, get ready to just worship and learn what God may be trying to tell you this morning. So if you want to come to the front and pray with me and Ryan, we're going to be praying. Or if you just want to sit in your pew and grab a hand next to you or, or, or come to the altar, it's up to you. You, you pray this morning and just get prepared uh, for worship. Lord, we do come to you this morning and we thank you for all the many blessings that you give us. And Lord, we're so undeserving, but you, you bless us in a mighty way. And we just pray, especially this morning, you be with Steve and Kim as they travel home. And we pray that you'd be with Ryan and lift him up this morning. And just hide him behind the cross and let your words be spoken and let our hearts be receptive to the message uh, that you have for us today. We just uh, pray for all those in our church family that are, are sick or having personal problems, that you be with each one in a special way that only you can. We pray now that you uh, uh, prepare our hearts and that our time here this morning would truly be a time of worshiping you. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you. Children, why don't you come on down for the children's moment? We can scoot a little closer. I promise I took a bath last night. There you go. Okay, we got enough space. We're good. Well, good morning. So, today we're going to talk about a subject that not a lot of people like to talk about. It's about lying. Something that not a lot of people like to admit, but that's because they're lying. Okay, so, basically... Have you ever been lied to? Did it hurt? Yeah. Have you ever lied to somebody? In the end, did it end up hurting too? Yeah. Yeah, I know. So um, I have a story about lying. And it's the crazy thing is about this man who was titled the man after God's own heart. Okay? He was David. Do you guys remember what David did in the Bible? There was a big old giant. There you go, David and Goliath. Very good. So David, eventually after that story, he became a king. And David was very, very close with God, but 
David decided to take something that wasn't his. And instead of confessing it, he instead decided to cover it up. So even kings lie. Do you know that? So, whenever David lied and he tried to cover it up, a lot happens in the story. If you ever get a chance to really look into this story, you know, you might want to have your parents with you to go over a couple of things, but basically, God still forgave him. Even though he was a king, even though he was held to a really high standard, he lied, but it's because he was able to confess what he did. I'm going to read something to you. David ended up writing, so in, well, as I drop my stuff. Thank you. I need you everywhere I go. That's awesome. So, basically, David wrote a song. So, in uh, Psalms, David wrote a letter to God after he had lied and after he had, um, what's the word, been forgiven. And this is him expressing how it feels to be forgiven. So, Psalms 32, it says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. What joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt and whose lives are lived in complete honesty. Down at verse 5, it says, Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I'll confess my rebellion in the Lord. So he forgave David. That's the point here is that even if we lie, if we keep things secret, it's always going to come out, okay? But our God is bigger than the guilt that we feel. We can always come to him, and we can always ask for forgiveness. We may have to face the consequences, but our God is bigger even than those consequences. Did you guys know that? Yeah. So what I want us to do today and throughout the rest of this week is I want us to really think about how we can open up and how we can kind of shine a light in those dark places that we don't want people to see. Many of you may not have many of those, but just think about that throughout the rest of this week. So let's go on ahead and say a word of prayer so that we can um, confess those and we can really praise God with a clean and pure heart, okay? Father, thank you so much for bringing us all here today. God, you know that we all have secrets, but the crazy thing is you see every single one and you still forgive us for them. I pray that you will just uh, allow us to really worship you today and uh, just help us to apply this lesson throughout the rest of this week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thanks, Diana. You guys can stand, sit, do whatever it is you need to do to worship this morning. And I love that message because this is, this first song we're doing is just like a prayer. And so I'm going to ask that you would pray this to God and ask Him to open up our hearts so that we can see Him. Holy, 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 holy,
that's true church that you want to see him this morning and maybe you already have seen him and if that's the case and you have seen the light let's sing about that i've wandered so aimless a life filled with sin i wouldn't let my dear savior in then jesus came like a stranger in the night praise the lord i saw the light Church, 
you have, let this be another prayer this morning that, that we would be drawn close to God and that he would draw close to us. So let's sing that together. Amen.
failing The end draws near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending The true church that we get to come this morning and worship your name. So Father, I pray that you be with us right now. Speak to us in a powerful way. I pray that you be with Ryan as he brings the message. Help us to listen to what is you have to tell us through him. In your name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Um, go to a word of prayer real quick. God, I, uh, Holy Spirit, we just uh, welcome you here this morning, Father. Holy Spirit, we just pray that you fill this place. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you fill this atmosphere, that you be in every breath we take. Be thick in this place, Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you didn't like it last time, you should have threw tomatoes. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's funny how uh, the Holy Spirit works and uh, th- this whole journey. And, and uh, when Steve asked me to, to fill in for him again, um, I knew right then what it was I needed to talk about. And you know, and Steve's so funny. He's like, "Well, man, I ain't pressuring you or nothing, but just do, be doing some praying about it." And uh, <laughs> man, it took me a few days to get back with him. He sent me another text, "Man, I ain't pressuring you, but have you been praying?" <laughs> and uh, I called Steve, and I'm like, "Man, well, you hadn't had anybody else just want to fill in, have you?" And he said, "No." And I said, "Well, you know, the every time I've prayed, all it's been is 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 what God has put on my heart to to talk about." And uh, last Sunday, uh, you know, Steve started a new series uh, with life. And uh, after that service was over, and you know, I'd already knew I was going to be speaking this morning, and and uh, I mean, I already had the sermon title, and uh, just a detour on the road of life. And uh, you know, the thing Steve talked about was, uh, I believe he preached out of Luke. And was given, uh, you know, talking about uh, worry and stress and, and and all these things, and 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 how that, uh, and and what we should do so that we uh, can live happy, joyful life. Uh, but he didn't say talk about much of what happens when you when you do worry and when you do stress. And, uh, and that's kind of what I'm talking about today. Uh, there's not many people that, uh, that, that, that even know because I've, I've kept this just with fair friend, close friends and family. But uh, March 15th, I finally went to the doctor because I was having panic attacks and nervous breakdowns. 
and was so bad I couldn't get out of bed on the weekends. And, and I want to start with this, with this verse because uh, Jesus put this, put this scripture on my heart early in the week. And, uh, and I thought I knew I understood what, what I needed to do. And it was, it was more about my weakness. But after last night, he, he, he showed me exactly why he put this on my heart. And it's in uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 5 through 10. And, and Paul is speaking here. And uh, he, he, what he's talking about is, is, is God had taken him up into the third heaven. And, and he, was, he was talking about being able to boast about that. And so let's go to Scripture. It says, That experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to do it. I will boast only about my weakness. If I wanted to, if I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth. But I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. Even though I have re received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in, your, in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast... On, about only about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me that's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults hardships persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ for when I am weak then I am strong and 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 I thought this this whole depression and anxiety was 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 a weakness and, and, and it very well is. But he brought to light the pride I didn't even know I had in my heart. It was this pride of being here on church on Sundays and coming in and having this face on. There probably wasn't a person here who knew that I, what I was going through and the torment and the torture that was going on and the the deadness that I was feeling on the inside because I could put the smile on and I could, I could shake people's hands and when they ask, how are you doing? Man, I'm great, how are you? You know, doing better than I deserve. Blessed is what we like to say. And then Steve would, at the end of the service, would have this altar call and I would feel this, this calling of God wanted me to get on my hands and knees at this altar and bow down. And I wouldn't do it. Because I was too prideful. Because I, I, I thought that people would think, he doesn't have all together, look at him. He's face down on the floor and crying, look at him. He's a fraud. That's the pride that I had. And why, why do we do that? Why do we put this mask on? These lies. That's what they are. They're lies. We come in here and we hug each other. Because we want people to, don't, we want people to think that, man, them crutchers, they got it all together. Look at them. This place should be filled with broken people because we are. We're, we're all broken. And we're all in the need of Jesus. But we put this face on like we don't need it. Because we're worried about what people think. That's the, that's the pride. And, the, and so in this, man, I, how I am, I'm, I'm boasting in my weakness. You know, this, uh, this anxiety, well, it started with, I guess, the depression first, and it was a slow fade. 
Well, it probably started a little over two years ago. Uh, and probably even before that. You know, when, when the oil field slowed down and you know, I, had to, I had to lay four guys off at work. Hardest thing still today that I've ever done. Because uh, I knew that the decisions I, I had to make were going to uh, affect four different families. And it killed me. And uh, in the last two years have been, been rough years. Uh, not only with work, but uh, it just seemed within the last, I guess it started in about November of this year, of last year. And, uh, and it just seemed like everything was snowballing. Uh, things at work, things at home. Um, we <laughs> woke up one morning and found a leak in our kitchen that's still not done. Sorry, Holly. Um, and the, the, the stress at work and the, the stress with cash and, and I'm... And, You know, I was praying to God about it, but I was still trying to cover. I was still trying to carry all of it, and finally, it got. Uh, it got. Uh, I was getting where. You know, we went on a ski trip in February, and this is my favorite trip of the whole year. I can't wait to go snow skiing. And this last year, I didn't even want to go. And I knew something right then, all right, something's wrong with you. Uh, usually I'm, I'm packed and ready two weeks before and, you know, checking the snow every day and, and weather. And this year I packed 15 minutes before we left and got there and was just, uh, so I knew something was wrong, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. And one Saturday... Had been March thirteenth. Um, I'm laying in bed, and it's uh, nine or ten o'clock, and I knew I needed to get up and get my clothes on and get started. Man, I just had to peel myself out of the bed. Went to my closet, put my clothes on, got dressed sat down and put my boots on and just sat there for 10 minutes. I couldn't even put my boots on. And I'm thinking, what is wrong with you? What is wrong? This isn't me. I stand up and I go get back in bed. I'm dressed and I'm, I'm back in bed. And the whole time, Holly, you need, you need to go to the doctor. And uh, Cash come in the room, and he knew something was wrong, but he he didn't know. He just knew that you know that uh, I just wasn't being myself. And he's he gets right here beside the bed, and he's making a goofy face, trying to get me to laugh. And I turn to him and say, "Back up." Now I know this isn't me. That is not who I am. I love my boys. I love acting goofy with my boys. I love wrestling and fighting and with my boys. And Holly again said, you need, you need to go to the doctor. And she'd been telling me this for months. But I keep thinking. I can get through this. I, I'm, I'm stronger minded than that. See, Holly knew exactly what I was going through. Uh, when, uh, when I asked her dad uh, if I could marry Holly, we was driving in the pickup. And his first comment was, now you know she's on medication, right? <laughs> and uh, he said, you weren't around before those, the, the, the unmedicated years. <laughs> and uh, he said, but I want you to know that there's a, she deals with depression, and I, and I knew this, 
but Daryl wanted me to make sure that I did understand it. And, and uh, sure enough, uh, and so Holly, Holly has dealt with the depression, and she's seen it and knew exactly what it was, but uh, I'd never suffered from that kind of depression. And I'm like, I'm not depressed because I'm not sad. And she finally said, okay, if you don't, I'm not going to stop nagging you until you go to the doctor. And I went, and they wouldn't see me. And the whole time I'm thinking, all right, man, okay, it's, uh, okay, maybe I'm not strong-minded enough, but, man, I've been praying. I've been praying for God to take this from me and to figure out what it is. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not praying right. So I change up my prayers. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe it's a faith issue. Maybe I'm not believing enough, you know. Claim it. Man, and the, the fight that I was going through and the, the just, uh, and it wasn't, it, it finally, went, finally made it to the doc, well, I talked to Steve. Because Steve has dealt, and Steve was telling me before, man, you're depressed. Because Steve knows exactly how I was feeling, because he's dealt with it. And I would tell him, I was telling him how I felt. And the scariest part of that whole deal was the anxiety and the panic attacks. Because I've never lost complete control of my body in, until then. And it, it would start early with a, with a tightening in my chest. And I'd fight it. And I knew it was coming. And then our enemy would just snowball it at me. It would be work. And then it would be, as soon as I walked in the door, it was something. And then, and then it was something else. And then something else until finally I broke And I was pacing, and I couldn't breathe. But it, but it wasn't like an asthma attack, it, or you know that I couldn't actually breathe. It was just, I could not get enough air. And it would end up with me pacing uncontrollably until I would finally say, "All right, you've got to you've got to stop." And as soon as I sit down, I'm doing this, and I'm rocking, and I cannot stop. And then I'm like, all right, well, you need to stop doing that. And so I would I'd put my hands here, and then it was rubbing my head. Lost complete control. But that still wasn't the scariest part. The scariest part was I was so numb, I could not feel God anymore. That's the part that killed me. As hard as I tried, I'd sit in that pew and I'd close my eyes. And I could not feel God. In talking with Steve, I mean, he knew exactly what it was and would, I mean, would call it before I would even tell him. And so I finally went to the doctor March 15th. And uh, it's so funny, the, the pride that, that I have. And that, you know, I walked in, uh, I need to see uh, Mr. Gary Jackson. Okay, what, you know, what's wrong? Well, I uh, got some sinus stuff, a little bit of depression. She's like, well, what was that? Uh, yeah, some sinus stuff and uh, a little bit of depression. She's like, did you say depression? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, 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 some of that too. And uh, come in and, and, and I've known Gary, I've gone to him forever and you know, come in and say, so man, what's up? See, so you got some sinus stuff? I was like, no, 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 no sinus stuff, I'm good. It's just a... And, uh, you know, he, he just... He said, man, what's going on? And I was just kind of telling him how I was feeling. You know, I was talking about, you know, my 
my faith and and uh and and even Steve had told me you know when Steve was diagnosed he he went to a a, a friend of his that was a, a a Christian psychologist and he told him this is what I don't get about you Christians you think that you uh you ain't got enough faith to get through this you know that you ain't praying right he said uh you know God has given these, you know, you're looking for a healing. But God has given these doctors and these pharmacists and these biologists, these great minds. So, so just because a healing doesn't look like I think it should, doesn't mean that there won't be healing. And Gary was, uh, was telling me kind of what had happened. And I was telling him all the stress I was under, and he said, that, "Yeah, that's that's exactly what happens." He said, "When when you're when you feel all this stress, your body responds with adrenaline." He said, "Adrenaline's great when you need to pick a car up off your friend, or you need to run away and get away, or you need to fight somebody." Or he said, "The the adrenaline is great, but when it's not used like that, he said your body has quit producing, your brain has quit producing serotonin." Your, your, your brain is serotonin deficient. And he said the serotonin is the, is the stuff that, that moves all the hormones around to the different parts of the brain so that your brain can work. He said, man, that's all it is. He said, man, we're going to get you on some medicine and, and uh, it'll get your serotonin back up and you ought to be feeling, feeling a lot better. And I'm thinking, oh, man, you know, on these pills and I'm still thinking... And still praying, God, uh, you know, wants you to heal me. And I got to thinking, you know, Cash started some pills for his seizures. And uh, when we left the when we left the hospital, he did, hadn't had a didn't have one. And I'm thinking, well, we're, we're claiming a healing on Cash. You know, he takes a pill and he's healed. So why can't I, with the chemical balance in my brain, take a pill and be healed? And uh, it's been a uh, it's been a long and crazy ride, but uh, it has gotten a lot better, um, more than anything. I'm just so happy that I can feel my God again. You know the the National Institute of Mental Health estimates that 16 million adults had at least one major depression depressive episode last year that's nearly that's seven percent of the population and 350 million people worldwide suffer from depression and and here was was this just hit me last night I was actually talking to Steve last night. He texted me at about 11.30 and he said, what are you doing? He said, are you studying? I said, <laughs> I started laughing. I texted him back. I said, yeah, I'm in my closet right now studying. He said, how did I know? But here, here are some symptoms of, uh, of depression. Extreme irritability over minor things. Had that one. Anxiety and restlessness. Had that one. Anger management issues had that one because that was the only thing that I could feel. That was the only thing that I did feel in that depression was anger. That was it. Not happiness, not sad. Anger was all I felt. Loss of interest in favorite activities. Check that one off. Fixation on the past or, the, or on things that have gone wrong nearly all day every day. And the last one here, thoughts of death or suicide. Thank you, Jesus, I did not get that far. Because I had taught, I had a great godly wife who's seen it. I had good godly friends that seen it. It encouraged me to get that, the, the help that I needed. And here were some, some physical symptoms. Insomnia or sleeping too much. Definitely had insomnia. 
extreme fatigue. You're tired all day till you get in bed. I mean, I was dragging all day long until I got in bed. And then my mind would not shut off. Weight gain, weight loss. Yeah, I had uh, weight loss because uh, I'd lost my appetite. Difficulty concentrating or making decisions. Check that one off. Unexplained aches and pains. Check that one. My neck and in between my shoulder blades and my traps would just be hard as a golf ball with the... uh, with knots in my muscles. And and so I want to go next is Matthew six, twenty-five through thirty-four. You know, and Steve touched on this, but in Luke, um, you know, it's still Jesus Jesus talking here. And it's Matthew 6, 25 through 34. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. Don't they, they don't plant or harvest or store up food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? You know, um, in, in, in verse 25, because of all the ill effects of worry, Jesus tells us not to worry about those needs that God promises to supply. Worry may damage your health, disrupt your productivity, neg- negatively affect the way you treat others, and reduce your ability to trust in God. How many ill effects of worry are you experiencing? Here's the difference between worry and genuine concern. Worry immobilizes, but concern moves you to action. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care more about you. Why do you have so little faith? Um, so don't worry about these things saying what will we eat what will we drink what will we wear these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers but your heavenly father already knows all your needs Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is is enough for today. You know, seek the kingdom of God above all else means to put God first in our lives. To fill our thoughts with his desires. To take his character for our pattern and to serve and obey Him in in everything. So what is really important to you? People, objects, goals, and other desires all all complete, all compete for priority. Any of these can quickly become the most important to you if you don't actively choose to give God first place in everything of your life. And so this, this, this detour 
I like to call it a detour. Because I don't, I, I, I don't think I ever left the path. I still had the same goal, the same destination. God just decided to put up a road, road close sign and said, man, I need you to go this way. You know, they say, uh, that just about everyone, you know, there, there's, there's a, there's a difference in, you know, uh, going through a depression where something bad has happened. Uh, because that's, that's natural. But worrying about the, 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 the stress and my, my, my Jesus was nailed to a cross. and was killed so that I didn't have to carry these worries. And how quickly we forget that. You know, and, and thinking, man, Jesus, you just don't really understand the anxiety that I'm having in these attacks. Well, I've never sweated blood. Jesus knows anxiety. As he was praying in that garden... And asking, Dad, if there's another way, let's do that. And was so distraught that sweats of blood poured off of him. He knows exactly how that anxiety feels. He knows exactly how it feels. For he was fully God and fully human. But like Steve preached last last last. Sunday in John Jesus even understood that without God he was still nothing I want to I don't even know where I'm at on time <laughs> uh, I'm not going to worry about it there are some promises that I want us to look at um, turn with me to John fourteen twenty seven, and uh, here Jesus is 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 giving us a promise, and it's a it's a promise of uh, peace. Let's let's look at it here. John fourteen twenty seven. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is the gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. And the whole reason that, that we can that we have that promise is because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's where we find our peace. And and the another promise is um, in John sixteen twenty two. Just flip a few pages over there. And uh, it's, so you, so you, so you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth: you will ask the Father directly, and He will grant your request because you use My name. You haven't done this before. Ask using My name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. That's just, that's, that was the second promise. And we still get that same joy through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, uh, my, and this is still, uh, even the last time I spoke, uh, I, I used this verse. Uh, this is my favorite verse and, and one that uh, I turn to so often. And it just kind of sums up everything for me. And it's John sixteen thirty three. 
For I've told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. And, you know, I can't help but think there's somebody there this morning that that knows exactly what I was talking about. Knows those exact same feelings that I was talking about. And uh, I know I needed this. I was telling Steve last night, I just broke down. I was like, man, you know, he called, man, thank you for this. And I said, no, dude, you don't understand. Thank you. I needed this. I needed this. And uh, I just want people to understand and know that, especially as men, you know, we, don't, we don't talk about these feelings. And, and this was hard to talk about. Um, you know, we're supposed to have it all together. But it's all a facade. Uh, you know, this, this, this church should just be, and is, full of broken people just needing a Jesus. And thank God that when God looks down and, and sees Ryan Crutcher, he doesn't see this depressed, anxious, low-down, dirty sinner. He sees his son. He sees Jesus. He sees Jesus. Because he is the one living inside of me that I forget so much about and and forget about the, the... the power and the promises that Jesus gave us. That we have authority. Not because it's me, but because of the one living in me. And so, we started to close it up. I don't even know where we're at on time, but uh, as we close it up, man, if, uh, if anybody would love to talk um, and I don't guess there's a way we could put my name up on or my phone number up on the screen is there Chuck it's uh, 806 are we ready for that uh oh okay well I'll keep talking then <laughs> um I'm going to put my my phone number up there. And uh and if anybody ever ever needs to call, please and 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 get with Steve. Steve knows exactly how it feels. Yeah, or 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 Jonathan. Find somebody to to talk to because I can't help but think that out of those six symptoms the next one would have been thoughts of death or suicide. And I definitely ain't that person. But I can tell you the way I was living, I would not want to live like that for the rest of my life. I can understand. I can understand that hurt. Because you do not want to live like that. But thank God I've got good godly people who understand and and have helped me, but number eight oh six eight nine three two one four zero. But I just pray that uh this morning Father God I uh 
I pray this morning, Father, that the, that the mask fall off, Father. God, I pray that the facade stops that we put on, Father. Let us empty ourselves of that pride that we have it all together, Father. Let us come broken before you, Father. Let us come broken before you. God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your promises. God, thank you for your promises of, of, of peace and joy. God, thank you for the resurrection of our victory in that, Father. Thank you for that, Jesus. And it's in his name I pray, amen. free to come down to the front you need to pray grab somebody and come pray and so we give our lives you were the sacrifice you came and paid the price you gave us back our side and there is no more night we bow down before you we worship and adore
God, I'm so thankful and grateful for your healing in whatever form that may come in. God, I'm thankful for testimonies and stories that we can just bring your glory, show your glory. Father, I pray that uh, as we go through this day that you would help us to know what path we should take, Father. If there's anyone struggling with a a similar thing, Father, that you would just speak to us on a personal level. So God, as the offering is taken up, Father, I pray that you would just speak to us, continue to speak to us today, and for the rest of uh, the rest of the week. Help us not to wait, Father, but let us accordingly to what you've told us. Don't let us put it down and put it aside. In your name I pray, amen. let God stop speaking to you today. If you need to come talk, you come do that. But stand and grab a hand. Let's, let's sing on that here. So I shout out your name from the rooftops. So I'll shout out your name. 